Hey guys, it's Charles with Premium B, and in this video, we're gonna look at creating depth maps on our video footage and images using an After Effects plugin called Depth Scanner. We'll look at how the plugin works, the strengths and the weaknesses, and I also wanna share with you guys some really fun ways you can use the plugin with other effects. But hold up, if you don't wanna to have to buy a plugin, then no worries. I'll also show you guys how you can instantly create depth maps for images in Photoshop using one of their new neural filters. So stick around guys, because we're gonna look at a lot of fun stuff in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, as I mentioned, we're gonna be using an After Effects plugin called Depth Scanner, which is available on AE Scripts. It uses artificial intelligence to generate a depth map based on your original footage or image. At this time, it's only compatible with Windows. And I'll have links for everything that I mentioned in this video on the blog post. So check for that link in the description if you need to find something. Now let's go ahead and jump over to After Effects and take a look at how Depth Scanner works. All right guys, I'm using After Effects 2022. You will need to use After Effects 2021 or above for this plugin to work. I also already have the plugin installed. I do wanna briefly mention that the installation process for this plugin is a little bit more lengthy than most plugins. Uh, once you download the installer, it has to download quite a bit on the back end. I'm assuming for the algorithms and everything else that this plugin uses. It takes about 10 minutes or so, depending on your internet connection. So just keep that in mind as well. And what I've got here is some footage of this astronaut. This is just a shot from Shutterstock. And I thought this would work quite nicely for kind of demonstrating this plugin. We have subject in the foreground and the background's a little bit out of focus here and we have some parallax going on. So let's go ahead and apply depth scanner to this shot. Get my footage selected, come here to effect and you're gonna see Blaze plugins and depth scanner. And immediately we can see we have a very low resolution depth pass on our footage. Let's come over here to the effects controls and the primary settings that we're gonna be looking at are gonna be the model and the resolution here. So Let's go to resolution first. It's set to tiny. And if we come down here and bump this up to medium, we're gonna see we get a much better resolution here on our depth pass. And I'm actually gonna bump this up to large. And you can kind of see the differences here we're getting. Let's go to original. And that's gonna be the original resolution of your footage. I typically set this to be large. Um, I found that when I bump it up to original, there's not that much difference uh, depending on the shot. And if your shot's 4K, uh, it can really slow down your machine here, or sometimes even crash the plug-in. So I've typically used this at large. If we zoom in here, you can see the results are quite nice on everything. We're actually at 200%, so here it is at 100%. And we're getting really clean edges on everything, especially for a depth pass as far as that goes. So I like the results I get from this. Now with the model resolution here, let me zoom back out. You can see we're using faster. You can bump this up to accurate. And you can see the difference we get there. There's a little bit of subtle differences on different things. And depending on whatever footage I'm looking at, I'll typically toggle between the accurate and faster. And just whichever one looks nicer, I'll go with that. In this case, I actually like the faster one a little bit better. Just because to me, it looks like it's picking up less of the background here. So most of the background's totally white. And now if you're using this on an image, you're basically already done. But we're obviously using this on a video clip. So let's go ahead and kind of scroll through here and you can see what's happening. We are getting quite a bit of flickering going on, and that is one thing to note with depth passes on video here. This is gonna be very common on any shots you're doing this with, and that will affect how you're going to be able to use your depth pass and what effects you're gonna be able to use. So you can see we're getting flickering here on the subject here in the front, and we're getting a little bit of artifacting around the edges. So if you're expecting this to be perfectly clean, it is not going to be, but I've actually found you can do quite a few different effects still, even with it in this state. And I was actually kind of surprised at the results in a lot of cases. And I'll show you guys kind of the best ways you can use this as well to kind of work around some of these issues. But one of the things they have built in here is this temporal averaging. Let's go ahead and check that on. And you'll definitely want to use this if you're using this on a video shot. And what this basically does, at least my understanding of it, is whatever frame of video you're on, it's going to take the frame before and after it and kind of blend those together and give you a better average. And the reason I kind of came to that conclusion here is if we zoom in here, kind of on some of this movement, you can see we kind of have three different layers here uh, kind of being overlaid. So I'm assuming that that's what's going on. And hopefully they continue to kind of refine this because this is definitely something that's needed with video. But again, we have to kind of give the plugin some credit because it is generating this strictly from a video clip. So there's definitely a lot going on in the back end. Let's go ahead and ramp preview this now and you can kind of see it has reduced that flickering. There is some flickering still present, but it's definitely dialed it back quite a bit. Now the next settings we can see here are just kind of what we want to use to process this. So we have the GPU, use half the GPU, and then fall back to the CPU. I typically leave all these checked to the defaults. Next we have the mapping default. It's going to be set to normalize and it just kind of generates an automatic depth pass for us. But if we want to, we can uncheck this. 
And you can see this is gonna give us total control of the depth map. So we can go ahead and kind of adjust this. And you can see how this kind of scrolls through the depth pass. If we want to kind of isolate something specific or if we want to kind of bring out something a little bit more. And you can see as I increase this, you can see kind of how that affects the shot. In a lot of cases, the normalize option here that's already checked will give you pretty good results, but it's nice to kind of have that as a backup or if you just want to kind of isolate different areas of your shot. And speaking of that, we have the modes here. The initial one is the depth map. We have another option here, which is slicing. And this is really cool because it's kind of like what we did with the mapping here under normalize, but we can do this on our footage. So you can see we can kind of slice out different parts of our clip. So if I go ahead and adjust this, you can see I can slice out just the background and I can continue to bring this forward and slice out our subject, or I can leave this back set and maybe just slice out the subject here. So we're just kind of slicing through and this can be good for transitions and things like that. I'll show you guys some cool stuff we can do with that. Let's go ahead and look at another shot here I've got of some drone footage. And I've gotten some really good results with shots like this or shots of objects. So far, shots of people can be kind of hit or miss depending on kind of all the accessories they've got or if they have a lot of hair. Hair definitely is something that this plugin kind of struggles with, as you can imagine. But let's go ahead and apply the effect to this drone shot here. You can see it's just a flyover shot. So I've got my footage selected, come to effect, place plugins and depth scanner. Now we have a low resolution. Let's go ahead and bump this up to be large. And you can see how it's already kind of like generated some nice looking stuff here around the kind of chimneys and stuff on these buildings. And we can see those going off in the distance. I'm gonna check and see what the difference is with accurate here. And I do like that a little bit better. It just kind of makes the depth pass come out a little bit better. Let's go ahead and check on the temporal averaging here. Now we go ahead and preview this and you can see we are getting obviously some flickering still and some edges artifacting around the edges of the buildings. Um, and when I first saw this, I kind of thought, well, this probably won't work very well for a kind of a blur pass if I use this as a depth map, but I was actually quite surprised. And I'll show you guys some results that I got from this. So what I wanted to do in this case here is I wanted this to be in focus and the background to be out of focus. And if you notice, the flickering is not nearly as prominent uh, or hardly noticeable at all in the background back there. So what I decided to do is uncheck normalize here and let's use this absolute depth here. I'm gonna bring this back quite a bit. And by doing that, we can get a result more like this. We're kind of more in focus here of these front buildings. Let's jump over to the composition where I've actually applied the effects already. And so you can see what I've got here is I've got two different layers of the footage. And what I've done here on the normal layer is I've just applied basically a camera lens blur effect. This is Crosshair Boca, which is the, it's another blur plugin. Very similar, but you can see we get this nice depth of field. I check this on and off. And this gives me the option to set a depth map. And a lot of effects will have this option. So what I've done is I've just set this to a second copy if I solo it down here of my footage, which has depth scanner applied to it. And we've done that same thing where we've generated a depth pass and I've used the mapping here to set the depth here to be more focused on the front. So let's go ahead and unsolo that and come back to our original footage. And you can see we get this nice bokeh effect, kind of like a miniature looking effect here on the shot. And when I first apply this, before I previewed, I actually expected this would not look that good because again of those edging artifacts and stuff like that and the flickering. But as you can see here on the actual shot, the results are very nice and you're not really noticing that much flickering at all. Definitely some usable applications for this type of shot. And I think the results of this look quite nice. Another creative way you can use this plugin is creating these depth transitions, which look really neat. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna check this back on to be normalized here for our mapping. And then for the mode, let's go ahead and change this to slicing. And what I'm talking about, like a transition with depth, we can use, we can keyframe this minimum and maximum setting here. If I go ahead and you can see, we could create a transition of our footage just using this. So it basically animates on based on the depth of the video. You've probably seen similar transitions like this, but it typically works on just the luminance of the image, not the actual depth. So when we're doing this based on the depth, it can create some really cool looking shots. Let's take a look at another example I've got here. I'm kind of obsessed with this effect, the way it uses the depth for the transition. I think it looks really unique and it looks a lot cooler than something just like that using the luminance or any other like video value. And here's another scene where I tried this out on. I had to try this on several drone shots just because I love the results. All right guys, let's pause for just a second before I show you some other cool stuff you can do with Depth Scanner. Let's go ahead and look at how we can automatically create a depth pass on an image in Photoshop. All right guys, I am in Photoshop version 2022. It's one of the latest releases here. You're probably gonna need that in order to access the neural filters we're gonna use. And I've got this image here of just a bee on the flower here. And we have a little bit of stuff out of focus in the background. I'm gonna show you guys how you can automatically create a depth pass here in Photoshop and we can compare this to Depth Scanner as well. Again, you don't need any plugins for this, you just need Photoshop. 
So what I'm gonna do is I've got my image here. I'm gonna come here to filter. You're gonna see neural filters. Go ahead and select that. Now we'll open up this neural filter panel and you're gonna see we have this depth blur right here. And in your version, you're probably gonna see this cloud kind of with the arrow icon there. And you will need to download this. You, so you just click that and it'll download it. I think it's about 250 megabytes, but don't quote me on that. But I've already got it downloaded for mine. So all I need to do is just check on the switch here and that's gonna start processing the image. And when that's done, you may see a blurry image here. And we have these settings here, we can set the focal distance and things like that, but we're not really interested in that. What we wanna get is down here at the bottom, you're gonna see output depth map only. Go ahead and click that. And now we can see we have a depth pass here. Let's go ahead and click OK. And it's just gonna add that depth pass onto a new layer here where you can toggle that on and off. So now if you wanted to, you can just go ahead and save this out. So come here to file and then save it out for whatever you need to save a copy as a PNG or a Photoshop file, whatever you want. And you can see here the depth results we get from this are pretty good. And I'll just show you guys on screen here. Here's the Photoshop version and here's a version of the same image processed through depth scanner. Both of them look quite nice. I do think the depth scanner one looks a little bit better and we would expect that because that is a paid plugin. There's a little bit more detail I noticed kind of on the B. If we zoom in here to the Photoshop version, you're gonna see we get a little bit more aliasing around the edges of things. You can see kind of around these flower petals here kind of get some stair stepping there that we're not getting on the depth scanner version. And again, if you just wanna try out some of the depth effects that I'm using, by all means, generate some passes in Photoshop and just follow along. All right, guys, jumping back over to After Effects. This is gonna be the fun part where I just show you guys some cool creative use cases that I kind of came up with for using depth scanner with other effects. So check out this. This is another transition here where I'm using the slicing effect. But you can see it's almost like it's loading in everything you see on screen here kind of like a matrix or digitized version of everything. I thought that looked pretty unique. And the way I'm doing this is I've just got two different layers of footage. So one, if I solo it here, is just the regular footage animating on using the slicing effect here. I've just got two keyframes you can see just here on the maximum value. So that's animating that on. And what I did was I had a second copy. And if we go ahead and solo that, so it's just below it and it's just offset a little bit here with its animation. And then what I applied to that was a preset, which is this video game preset that we have available on Premium Beat. If you wanna follow that tutorial, you can check that out. But I just applied that preset to this footage so it gives us kind of this digitized version. And so when I have both of these playing together and they're just kind of offset slightly, so the digital one comes on a little bit before the regular, it looks kind of like it's loading it here on the screen. Another thing I wanna show you here is kind of a cool solution to one problem we often get with depth passes. So what I've got here is some footage here of the astronaut again. And I've got another copy of it below here, which just has the depth scanner depth pass on it. So let's go ahead and let's apply a lens blur effect to our original footage. So effect, come in here to blur. We'll just select camera lens blur. And I'm gonna set the blur map to be the depth pass back there. I wanna make sure the effects and mask is turned on so it actually processes the depth scanner effect that's applied to it. And let's go ahead and increase the blur radius. And when I do that, you're gonna see one of the most common problems we get with depth passes on footage. And you can see how it's kind of fringing, it's blurring, you know, the guy in the background there. It's creating this fringe around what should be in focus. You know, obviously with real world footage, we're not gonna get a fringe like that. So that's obviously a problem you get with a lot of depth passes because again, it's referencing the same footage. So it's just kind of bleeding out around the edges. And using depth scanner, we can do a cool creative solution to this. So let me jump over to this other composition here I've got. And in this composition, you're gonna see I've applied the same effects here. I've got a blur on the background, but we're not getting that bleeding edge around our subject. And the way this is happening, let me go ahead and show you, kind of break this down. So I've got the same original footage here, and I've got the same depth pass in the background there. But I've got this middle background plate. Let me show you how I created this. Let's jump into this composition. So what I've got here is I just used the slicing effect to just slice out the astronaut here. If I jump into this one, Sorry for diving down into so many compositions here, but you can see I just have this slicing him out with that kind of minimum and maximum setting there on the slicing mode. And when we do that, we're left with obviously a hole here of where our astronaut's supposed to be. I added a matte choker effect there just to kind of soften this edge. I didn't even tweak any settings, just applied it. So it would just soften and get rid of a little bit of aliasing around that edge there, as you can see. And so I pre-composed that and what we're left with here is obviously this footage with a hole in it. 
And the first thing my mind went to was, okay, let's go ahead and throw this through content aware fill. And that's what I did. We have a tutorial on that. I'll link to that on the blog post as well if you wanna check that out. But it's pretty much just a one click, you know, automatically generating a fill here. But if you need to get to it, it's under window and you'll come down here to content aware fill. And that will open up a panel there and you can go ahead and generate that fill layer. I'll just go ahead and close that back up. And what that does, is gonna spit out this fill layer and I can turn this on. You can see what it's done is it's filled in that hole. Now, as it is right now, you can see there's a little bit of artifacting here with this line and stuff, but it did a pretty good job. And considering this is gonna be blurred out, this is gonna work perfectly for us. So let's jump back over to the main composition we've got here. And so what this allows us to do is then blur this background. I can set that footage to have a blur effect on it and for the depth pass. And when it blurs that background now, we're not gonna get that bleeding edge around our subject. It's kind of giving us that fringe that we don't want. And so this allows us to basically come up with a creative solution to mask that out. It just saves us a lot of time, obviously, a lot of time for having to mask that out. So that's another solution you can do with Depth Scanner. Let's come over here to another composition with the astronaut. It's the last one, I promise, with this guy. But another thing that's kind of cool is with that depth pass, if you ever have any VFX or you need somebody to pass through kind of like a you know, fake wall or fake layer, like a sci-fi effect or going through a portal, you could also use this slicing effect to kind of create that effect as well. So if I go ahead and scroll through here, you can see it's almost like he's passing through this whatever sci-fi force field barrier we've got here. But you can see it gives us a pretty nice result. It's not perfect in all cases, but as you can imagine, kind of having to mask this manually, what a pain that would be and how long that would take. And considering this took about two seconds to kind of create this pass, I think it looks pretty good. So that's another option you've got there for creating passes like that with VFX. Now let me show you guys a cool kind of exposure effect you can do to kind of isolate the exposure of things. So again, it's kind of like masking, but it's kind of doing it for us automatically. So I've got this shot of this girl here. It's a shot from Shutterstock. And what I've done is I've got the depth pass here already done. Let me go ahead and toggle it on. So I'm gonna use this now to adjust the exposure of my shot. So what I'm gonna do here, let's go ahead and apply an invert effect to this shot. Come to effect, we'll go to channel and invert. So we wanna invert this. So the stuff in the background is darker here. And then what I can do with this shot is I'm gonna set it now to be a multiply blend mode. Now you can see everything's much darker behind her and I can just hit T for opacity here and I can adjust this. So I'm actually adjusting kind of the exposure of the background selectively. And obviously if I set this to 100%, it's a little bit too extreme. And you can see we're getting a little bit of kind of artifacting on her hair there. But if I set this to something like 40%, you know, it doesn't look too bad. And it's a nice way to kind of put more focus here on the subject. So it's a cool way you can adjust the exposure of a shot without having to do a lot of masking. It's gonna save you a lot of time with that. Here's another shot where I've done the same thing. So I've just duplicated the same shot twice here. Go ahead and check it on. And you can see the depth pass we're left with. So let's go ahead and apply the invert effect to this. And again, set this to be a multiply blending mode. And you can see it's very dark in the background there. We're getting a little bit of a fringe line kind of around her here, but again, we can adjust that. And again, you wanna be kind of subtle with this. I think it's where it works best. But again, it helps you kind of isolate, put more exposure here on your subject. And again, saving you that time of having to mask around them. Before we get to my favorite examples, I do wanna show you one little troubleshooting thing you can do if you do encounter issues using depth scanner. So I'm gonna turn it on with this shot here, this drone shot I've got. And I noticed occasionally I will get this weird artifacting in the sky. And I'm assuming that's happening uh, because of the banding of these colors here. Uh, it's difficult for it to kind of interpret what that is. And I thought to myself, you know, hopefully there's a solution for this, but there actually is just from experimentation I did. I'm in 16 bits per channel here. If I just go ahead and alt click and bump this up to 32 bits, it just gets rid of all that artifacting. So if you do encounter that, definitely try cycling through the different bit channels there. And probably at 32 bits, it will get rid of that artifacting. All right guys, here's two of my favorite examples I want to show you guys. So this is an image I took, a drone image that I took in the Matrix Awakens game experience, which is an Unreal Engine 5 demo that you can kind of play around with. And obviously this is all CG, but Depth Scanner still works on this. So I can go ahead and solo this. And you can see I've created a depth pass from this image. And then what I've done here on the image is I've applied the effect AE Pixel Sorter 2, which is also available from AE Scripts, which you can see we have an input option here and you can set the source of this to be that depth pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this on. And you can see we get this awesome kind of slit scan result from this. And how I've achieved this is under the output here, default, it will be sorted pixels. So it'll look something like this, but I've changed this to be the gradient. And that gives us more of a slit scan effect. But check this out, because we have the input here to that depth pass on the threshold, if I go ahead and adjust this, you can see we'll actually adjust through the image. And so you can do like a cool animation effect, giving it that depth. 
And if we go ahead and zoom in here, you're gonna see we get this a little bit kind of like a jagged, you know, it's not like a clean edge here on this. And the way I've achieved that is on that depth pass, we go ahead and solo it. What I've done is we just, I've applied a little bit of noise to that, you can see. And that way it'll break up that smoothness just a little bit and it gives it more of kind of a jagged edge there. It's not quite as clean. And you can see as I scroll through here, kind of what that looks like. And again, that's just on this image. So this might be pretty cool to apply and try this on video footage. Well, we've done that as well. And you can see this here, we're basically using the same technique to do this, to drive this animation. So I just recorded this game footage here, did depth scanner for a depth pass, and used the same pixel sorting technique. And I feel like we're just scratching the surface with all different effects we can create using depth scanner on real world footage. These are some of the ideas that I could come up with myself. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any other ideas for combining depth scanner with any other effects. I'm definitely interested in checking those out. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at using depth scanner. And if you made it this far in the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and check out some of the other new content that we have on the Premium Beat channel. We have a lot of cool things planned for this year. And with that, we'll catch you guys on the next one.